world came to America, to New York Harbor, and entered the portals of their new lives. In 1884, Nikola Tesla, son of a Serbian Orthodox minister, stood on the deck of a ship and smiled with satisfaction. Here in this country, in this very city, he would one day change the face of the globe. Nikola Tesla was born on July 10th, 1856, in Smiljan Lika, in what later became Yugoslavia. His father, Melutin Tesla, was a stern minister, and his mother, Juka Mandic, was an inventor in her own right of household appliances. She was never photographed. His childhood dream was to come to America to harness the power of Niagara Falls. Tesla studied mathematics and physics at Graz, Austria, and philosophy in Prague, Czechoslovakia. He began his career as an electrical engineer with a telephone company in Budapest in 1881. It was there, as Tesla was walking with a friend through the city park, that the elusive solution to the rotating magnetic field flashed through his mind. With a stick, Tesla drew a diagram in the sand, explaining the principle of the induction motor. Before going to America, Tesla joined the Continental Edison Company in Paris, where he designed dynamos. While in Strasbourg in 1883, he privately built a prototype of the induction motor and ran it successfully. Unable to interest anyone in Europe in promoting this radical device, Tesla accepted an offer to work for Thomas Edison in America, where he set about improving Edison's line of dynamos. It was here that his divergence of opinion with Edison over direct current versus alternating current began. This disagreement climaxed in the War of the Currents as Edison fought a losing battle to protect his investment in direct current equipment and facilities. This Edison plaque in Lower Manhattan denotes the first direct current power station in the United States. Edison built an empire on direct current supplying industry, transportation, and households in larger cities with direct current electricity. These Edison lamps were weak and inefficient when supplied by direct current. This system had a severe disadvantage in that it could not be transported more than two miles due to its inability to step up to high voltage levels necessary for long distance transmission. Consequently, a direct current power station was required at two mile intervals. Direct current flows continuously in one direction. Alternating current changes direction 50 or 60 times per second and can be stepped up to very high voltage levels, minimizing power loss across great distances. The future belonged to alternating current. Nikola Tesla developed the polyphase alternating current system of generators, motors, and transformers and held 40 basic U.S. patents on the system, which George Westinghouse bought determined to supply America with Tesla's electrical system. Edison did not want to lose his DC empire, and a bitter war ensued. This was the war of the currents between AC and DC. Tesla with Westinghouse ultimately emerged the victor because AC was a superior technology. It was a war won for the progress of both America and the world. Edison's home in New Jersey shows his comfortable life and his place in history is secure. It was a full life that ended peacefully in 1931. After leaving Edison, Tesla opened his first laboratory on South Fifth Avenue in New York City. As Tesla's fame increased, many notable friends came to his laboratory and participated in his experiments. The American writer Mark Twain was especially intrigued. Robert Underwood Johnson participated in Tesla laboratory experiments where electricity of very high voltage harmlessly passed through his body. He said, I was myself at that time the medium of the passage of an electric current of a million volts of the Tesla system of high frequency, whereas I believe 2,500 volts of the ordinary current is sufficient to kill. Very high voltage of electricity passes superficially through the skin, bypassing vital organs like the heart and the brain, and is therefore harmless. 
This laboratory burned to the ground, and two floors of personally constructed and unique scientific equipment, along with his notes, were destroyed. The New York Times of March 14, 1895, interviewed Tesla just after the fire and reported the distinguished inventor's heavy losses, which, while financial, also delayed development of his new inventions. Robert Underwood Johnson, publisher of Century Magazine and author of Remember Yesterday and other books, and his wife, Catherine, were both friends of Tesla. They published many articles about him and his work. Robert Underwood Johnson wrote in his book, Remembered Yesterday, Among the few persons whom I have met who I think are possessed of genius is my friend Nikola Tesla, the electrical discoverer and inventor. He was the discoverer of the principle of the rotating magnetic field. If he had done nothing else, this would entitle him to fame of the first order. Tesla was introduced to the Johnsons by Thomas Comerford Martin, Tesla's first biographer and the third president of the American Institute of Electrical Engineers between 1888 and 1889. He edited and published a remarkable collection of Tesla's contemporary lectures. Tesla was gifted with intense powers of visualization and exceptional memory from early youth on. He was able to fully construct, develop, and perfect his inventions completely in his mind before committing them to paper. According to Hugo Gernsbach, Tesla was possessed of a striking physical appearance, over six feet tall with deep-set eyes and a stately manner. His impressions of Tesla were of a man endowed with remarkable physical and mental freshness, ready to surprise the world with more and more inventions as he grew older. A lifelong bachelor, he led a somewhat isolated existence, devoting his full energies to science. He opened his second laboratory on Houston Street near Mulberry in Manhattan. It was capitalized with half a million dollars with the help of John Jacob Astor and J.P. Morgan. Here he could work night and day to improve dynamos. It was here that Tesla experimented with harmonic vibrations, nearly destroying his laboratory and the surrounding buildings. Many pieces of equipment from this lab survived to this day in the Tesla Museum in Belgrade. In October of 1887, Tesla began applying to the United States Patent Office for a comprehensive system of motors, generators, and transformers of electrical power. Tesla introduced his motors and electrical systems in a classic paper titled A New System of Alternating Current, Motors and Transformers, which he delivered before the American Institute of Electrical Engineers in 1888. One of the people most impressed with this lecture was the industrialist and inventor George Westinghouse. This concept of a nationwide electric power system was just what Westinghouse was waiting for. Tesla and Westinghouse would make a perfect partnership. Within two months of Tesla's lecture, George Westinghouse had acquired the rights to the patents and to Tesla's personal services to help develop the patents into commercial equipment. Westinghouse became dedicated to promoting the polyphase alternating current system and felt that his best chance to introduce it to the public at large would be at the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago. The Columbian Exposition was the World's Fair commemorating 400 years since Christopher Columbus set foot in the New World. Located on Lake Michigan near Chicago to facilitate access by sea, road, and rail, it was a gathering of ideas, men, and technologies from every corner of the globe, with each country contributing its best of their industrial, cultural, commercial, and educational enterprises. The Renaissance style of the exposition buildings were unsurpassed in their architectural beauty. Ever the ingenious promoter, Westinghouse outbid Edison for the contract to power the exposition's lighting and electrical systems. Over 200,000 electric light bulbs were illuminated by Tesla's polyphase alternating current system. The Westinghouse display was an historic collection of machines and exhibits, all using the Tesla Westinghouse alternating current. It was a spectacular display of lights and energy, which illuminated the exposition. Tesla's childhood dream was fulfilled with the harnessing of the power of Niagara Falls. In October 1893, 
a contract was signed with the Westinghouse Company to build the first two Niagara generators on Tesla's polyphase system. In April 1895, the first generators began turning. The plant became the electrical wonder of the world. The nameplate on one of the earliest generators at Niagara Falls lists nine of Tesla's patents. In 1896, a 26-mile high-tension transmission line carried electricity to operate streetlights and industrial machinery in Buffalo, New York. This large bronze statue of Tesla was Yugoslavia's bicentennial gift to the United States in 1976. Members of the Tesla Memorial Society rededicate it each year. The archives of the Nikola Tesla Museum in Belgrade holds over 150,000 documents relevant to Tesla's life and work, some of which are yet to be published. I am the director of the museum for last decade. And the museum, as you know, is now over 35 years old. In the museum, we keep a lot of things which were brought from the United States after Tesla's death by his nephew, Sava Kosanovic. The museum on the lower uh, floor has two parts. The first part is actually part devoted to personal things and to it's a memorial part of the museum. And in that part, we have that famous sculpture of Nikola Tesla, which is made by our famous sculptor, uh, Mestrovic. The lower part of the museum is a part devoted to Tesla's life and Tesla's work. And there are many interesting things from personal things, documents, pictures, instruments from the laboratories. Among documents which are stored in the museum, there are over 100,000 documents. Many of them are letters. There are also over 30,000 original and other documents about Tesla scientific work. There are more than 5,000 technical drawings over 700 photographs of various kinds connected with Tesla's work again, part of them, of course, with Tesla's life as well. First Tesla induction motor. He built it in 1887 to show that it is possible to produce a very efficient machine based on polyphase current. Here we have again two phase current passing into these four coils and the rotor which is rotated in the same way as the spinning egg but to get a much stronger action required for the motor, we here we have a short-circuited coils into the rotor. When we pass the current, the motor operates and its speed is nearly 3,000 revolutions per minute with a 50 hertz current. It's a very powerful motor, over half a horsepower. In 1882, Tesla discovered the idea of rotating magnetic field produced by two-phase current. Here is the machine which is actually designed to show that two-phase currents and uh, it contains two coils, the current to separate electrical circuit. One coil is going through those two rings into the et external circuit of the one phase and the other coil is going through the another two rings to the another phase circuit. Two phase alternating currents are fed into four coils. When we produce two phases current, they will, in combined action, produce the rotating magnetic field. And we can illustrate that by rotating the generator, and that will produce the rotation of the magnetic needle. So, indirectly, we see the rotating magnetic field effect. This is a hydraulic analogy of Tesla's rotating magnetic field and induction motor. When we produce the movement of piston in the way that two-phase current are producing, produced by the generator, we will produce the rotating magnetic field. So you can follow the movement of electrons through the conductor by movement of air bubbles through the tubes, and by observing the rotation of the triangle, you can see the way in which the rotating magnetic field causes induction motor rotor to rotate. In 1893, Tesla showed his 
alternating current system, induction motors, and various machines. Here is an experiment which he performed at that exhibition. Two phase alternating current. This is one phase current, another phase current, and we, here we have four coils. Those four coils produce a strong magnetic field, the rotating magnetic field. And that rotating magnetic field is going to rotate any metallic object which we place in it. Here we see an object in the shape of an egg. Induction motor doesn't require any connecting wires in the rotor, and that is that famous motor without brushes, which Tesla wanted to produce. Tesla's alternating current motor is a part of a whole system of polyphase currents. That system consists of a generator, like the one we have here. It is driven by water. Mechanical energy of water is converted into three-phase alternating currents. Those currents carry energy through the wires, first as a low voltage, then as a high voltage, with very low loss. We carry that energy through the wires. We step down high voltage into low voltage and distribute those currents to various loads, for example, electric motors. The model shown here is an example of generation, transmission, and utilization of electric energy. This is a cross-section of a modern induction motor built on the Tesla's principles. Rotating magnetic field, which is produced by the uh, conductors which go round, is rotating, causing induction-induced car currents into the short circuit coils into the rotor. This is the rotor. And that rotor rotates under the action of rotating magnetic field in the same way as the spinning egg we have seen in the previous experiments. Million and million of motors of this kind are used throughout the world. You have them, many, many of these type of motors you will find in your own home, in washing machine, dishwashing machine, in many record players, and so on. Tesla coil producing very high frequency, high voltage, and it can operate a single terminal electric bulb. This is actually similar to Tesla single electrode bulb, which was built in a slightly different way, but producing uh, high efficiency electric light. The experiment we see now shows the effect of induction current which can raise the piece of aluminium which we can see above the magnetic poles. Uh, alternating current is passing through the coil and produce induced current in the aluminium uh, piece and that induced current are producing opposing magnetic fields so that they try to repel each other but then there is a gravitation so there is a balance between gravitational force and the repelling force of the magnetic field and it is a levitation experiment. Now this kind of experiment is used uh, in practical single rail trains in which case we raise the train, lower the friction and then using a linear Tesla induction motor we can run the train along the single rail. It is very stable, as we see, because as soon as it moves from the magnetic field, the magnetic field moves it back to the stable position of levitation. When Tesla was a student at Graz, he had a chance to see a machine similar to this one. This is a gram machine with a commutator. That commutator produced a lot of sparks and Tesla complained to his professor asking him whether it would be possible to remove commutator from the machine since every generator produces alternating current and every motor in fact operates on alternating current but by using commutators at the transmitter or the, at the generator and at the receiver side. 
Tesla's professor said it was impossible, but later on, after many years, Tesla proved that it was possible, and he produced a brushless motor. This is a small mechanical oscillator. Tesla built several of them. One of them was in, used in his famous experiment when he connected it to the one part of the building and produced the vibration which shake the surrounding building, producing a small earthquake. And uh, the same os mechanical oscillator was used for another purpose, to produce a very high stability, high precision alternating current which Tesla wanted to use for driving electric clocks. By oscillating, it produced alternating current in the coils. And vibration can be controlled by pressure, compressed air. After about 1910, Tesla worked very hard in some mechanical designs, and among them there are some speedometers, and uh, this is one built by a firm Volcom, and uh, it was used in Cadillac cars. This is a combination of Tesla bladeless pump and turbine. On the left is the pump, which produces high pressure, which turns turbine on the right. Piece of cable through which the first current passed from Niagara Falls uh, power plant to Buffalo in 1895. This piece was presented to Nikola Tesla. In 1891, Nikola Tesla discovered the famous Tesla coil. That's an apparatus which converts low frequency current into high frequency high voltage current. In this machinery here, we produce a high voltage of about 200,000 volts between that and that terminal here. To show one experiment which we can perform with it, here we have a connection, a single wire connection to evacuated gas tubes here. So only one wire is connected to one side. The other terminal of the gas tube is not directly connected and we have a wireless transmission between this terminal and that end of the tube. So the system is actually demonstrating single wire transmission of energy. Today, the Tesla coil is used in every television and radio produced, plus many other applications. Here, Nikola Tesla is holding a bulb illuminated without wires by an electromagnetic field. This is an example of the wireless transmission of electricity. Nikola Tesla built several huge Tesla coils. The largest one he built in Colorado Springs. That Tesla coil, as we know, contains primary and the secondary. Primary of Tesla's Colorado Springs coil was 15 meters in diameter, therefore about 15 times this diameter. Secondary coil is this one with many turns, and we produce a very high voltage at the top ring, that's the last turn, and the high voltage appears between this disc and the ball which you can see on the top. Half a million volt is the breakdown voltage in between those two sections. In 1899 to the very beginning of 1900, Tesla spent nearly a year working on a largest laboratory he ever built, and that is Colorado Springs Laboratory. In that one, he built a huge Tesla coil with 15 meter diameter secondary coil. The top of the high voltage terminal of the transformer was connected to a high antenna. The antenna was about 60 meter high and it was connected to the ball on the top of it. When the Colorado Springs Tesla coil magnifying transmitter was energized, it created sparks 30 feet long. 
From the outside antenna, these sparks could be seen for a distance of 10 miles. From this laboratory, Tesla generated and sent out wireless waves, which mediated electrical energy without wires for many miles. The old Waldorf Astoria was the residence of Nikola Tesla for many years. He lived there when he was at the height of his financial and intellectual power. Tesla organized elaborate dinners, inviting famous people who later were invited to his laboratory for spectacular electrical experiments. Nikola Tesla, financially supported by J.P. Morgan, built the Wardenclyffe Laboratory and its famous transmitting tower in Shoreham, Long Island between 1901 and 1905. This huge landmark was 187 feet high, capped by a 68-foot copper dome which housed the magnifying transmitter. It was planned to be the first broadcast system, transmitting both signals and power without wires to any point on the globe. The huge magnifying transmitter, discharging high-frequency electricity, would turn the Earth into a gigantic dynamo, which would project its electricity in unlimited amounts anywhere in the world. Tesla's concept of wireless electricity was to be used to power ocean liners, destroy warships, run industry and transportation, and send communications instantaneously all over the globe. To stimulate the public's imagination, Tesla suggested that this wireless power could even be used for interplanetary communication. If Tesla was confident to reach Mars, how much less difficult to reach Paris. Many newspapers and periodicals interviewed Tesla and described his new system for supplying wireless power to run all of the Earth's industry. This is the interior of Tesla's laboratory, showing a large number of machines supplied by the Westinghouse Company. Because of a dispute between Morgan and Tesla as to the final use of the tower, Morgan withdrew his funds. The financier's classic comment was, if anyone can draw on the power, where do we put the meter? The erected but incomplete tower was demolished in 1917 for wartime security reasons. The site where the Wardenclyffe Tower had stood still exists, with its 100-foot deep foundation still intact. Tesla's laboratory, designed by Stanford White in 1901, is today still in good condition and is graced with a bicentennial plaque. The Tesla Memorial Society is asking that the Wardenclyffe Tower site, with the laboratory, be proclaimed a national monument. We will never know what might have been if the Wardenclyffe wireless system became operational. Nikola Tesla patented the basic system of radio in 1896. His published schematic diagrams described all of the basic elements of the radio transmitter, which was later used by Marconi. In 1896, Tesla constructed this instrument to receive radio waves. He experimented with this device and transmitted radio waves from his laboratory on South Fifth Avenue to the Gerlach Hotel at 27th Street in Manhattan. The device had a magnet which gave off intense magnetic fields up to 20,000 lines per centimeter. This radio device clearly establishes his priority in the discovery of radio. This shipboard quench spark transmitter, produced by the Lowenstein Radio Company and licensed under Nikola Tesla Company patents, was installed on U.S. naval vessels prior to World War I. In December 1901, Marconi established wireless communication between Britain and the United States, earning him the Nobel Prize in 1909 but much of Marconi's work was not original. In 1864, James Maxwell theorized electromagnetic waves. In 1887, Heinrich Hertz proved Maxwell's theories. Later, Sir Oliver Lodge extended the Hertz prototype system. The Brandley coherer increased the distances messages could be transmitted. The coherer was perfected by Marconi. However, the heart of radio transmission is based on four tuned circuits for transmitting and receiving. It is Tesla's original concept demonstrated in his famous lecture at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia in 1893. The four circuits, used in two pairs, are still a fundamental part of all radio and television equipment. The United States Supreme Court in 1943 held Marconi's most important patents invalid recognizing Tesla's more significant contribution as the inventor of radio technology. 
This is the photo of Tesla in the Smithsonian Institution. The photograph of the Wardenclyffe Tower commemorates his work with radio waves in the 1890s. This is the interior of the Department of Electricity at the Smithsonian, with Tesla's achievement of the first hydroelectric power plant at Niagara Falls. The Edison bust is featured prominently in this exhibition. Tesla is also the father of robotics. His initial demonstration was at Madison Square Garden in September 1888, where he displayed an iron-hulled boat that was operated by wireless remote control. These patents evolved into the technology behind guided missiles. In 1895, Tesla constructed a special boat which could be remotely controlled through the antenna. A signal uh, appears on a special coherer, which is a device sensitive to radio waves. And uh, by a special mechanism, which is a digitally controlled mechanism, he could transmit commands to move the rudder or to stop the turning of the propeller or to start turning of the propeller and, and so on. That was patented in 1895. The Century magazine published Tesla's principles of telegraphy without wires popularizing scientific lectures given before the Franklin Institute in February 1893. The Electrical Review in 1896 published x-rays of a man made by Tesla with x-ray tubes of his own design. They appeared at the same time as when Rentkin announced his discovery of x-rays. Tesla never attempted to proclaim priority. Rentkin congratulated Tesla on his sophisticated x-ray pictures. Tesla even wrote Rankin's name on one of his films. These rare photos of Tesla's hands were taken by the light of a vacuum tube he invented and proposed for a comfortable light source for photography. The breadth of his inventiveness is demonstrated by his patents for a bladeless steam turbine based on a spiral flow principle. Tesla also patented a pump design to operate at extremely high temperatures. In the late 1920s, Tesla patented a vertical takeoff aircraft. This design was used by the American military for the successful V-20 Army aircraft. Tesla lectured to the scientific community on his inventions in New York, Philadelphia, and St. Louis, and before scientific organizations in both England and France. Over 700 patents were issued to Tesla worldwide. Among these, the Tesla induction motor is widely accepted as one of the ten most important discoveries of all time. Tesla wrote many autobiographical articles for the prominent journal Electrical Experimenter. From these articles, a book was compiled entitled My Inventions. In 1915, a New York Times article announced that Tesla and Edison were to share the Nobel Prize for Physics. Oddly, neither man received the prize, the reasons being unclear. It was rumored that Tesla refused the prize because he would not share it with Edison, and because Marconi had already received his. In 1917, Tesla was awarded the Edison Medal, the most coveted electrical prize in the United States. On his 75th birthday in 1931, the inventor appeared on the cover of Time magazine. On this occasion, Tesla received congratulatory letters from scores of scientists, including Albert Einstein. Tesla is shown with Yugoslavia's King Peter in 1942. To his right is Sava Kosanovich, his nephew and later ambassador to the United Nations. Tesla died on January 7, 1943, in the Hotel New Yorker, where he had lived for the last 10 years of his life. The room 3327 is one of the two suites which he occupied. A state funeral was held at St. John the Divine Cathedral in New York City by the Yugoslav government in exile. Telegrams of condolence were received from many notables, including the First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt and Vice President Wallace. Over 2,000 people attended, including several Nobel laureates. He was cremated in Ardsley on the Hudson, New York. His ashes were interned in a golden sphere, Tesla's favorite shape, on permanent display at the Tesla Museum in Belgrade 
along with his death mask. The New York City skyline is lit by Tesla's polyphase alternating current, more commonly known as AC. AC is the standard of electricity in the 20th century. Tesla's discoveries are the basis for neon lighting. Times Square and Broadway's neon display pay tribute to the grandeur of his invention. A photo of the inventor is on permanent display in the Statue of Liberty Museum. Tesla's name was given to the International Unit of Magnetic Flux Density in 1956. Magnetic resonance imaging is the newest advancement in modern diagnostic radiology based upon a strong magnetic field. The capacity of every MRI imager is expressed in Tesla units. Siemens Magnetome SP, the innovation leader in MR. The powerful 1 and 1.5 Tesla Magnetome SP, ready for tomorrow with the most advanced features available today. In 1975, he was inducted into the Inventor's Hall of Fame. The United States Postal Service honored him and three other inventors with a commemorative stamp in 1983. An engraving of the Tesla statue adorns the Yugoslav 500 dinar note. Many biographical and scientific books have already been written about Tesla, with new publications continuing to appear. Margaret Cheney's recent book, Tesla, Man Out of Time, represents the most complete biography to date. In recent years, there has been a renewed public interest in Nikola Tesla. An increasing number of recently published books serves as testimony to his growing popularity. The Encyclopedia Britannica lists Nikola Tesla as one of the ten most interesting historical figures of all time. Several biographical movies on Tesla have been made, and several new ones are in preparation and production. The Nikola Tesla Award is one of the most distinguished honors presented by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. The award has been given annually since 1976. A film about uh, Nikola Tesla uh, right. and this award. Would you like to say just a few words about uh, Nikola Tesla Award? Well, it is one of the most important awards in the Power Engineering Society and uh, of necessity uh, I think it uh, denotes the enormous contribution that Nikola Tesla has made to our field. He started, really, the electrification of the world. A growing number of governors in various states in the United States proclaim July 10th, Tesla's birthday, an official day. The Liberty Science Center in Jersey City, New Jersey has a public display of the magnificent electrical discharges produced by the Tesla coil. The Nikola Tesla corner sign, located at the intersection of 40th Street and 6th Avenue in Manhattan, is a constant reminder to all New Yorkers of the greatness of this genius. Mr. Speaker, I am rising today to commemorate the 135th anniversary this month of the birthday of one of America's greatest inventors and scientists, Nikola Tesla. In his speech presenting Tesla with the Edison Medal, Mr. Berend, Vice President of the Institute of Electrical Engineers, eloquently expressed the following thoughts. Were we to seize and eliminate from our industrial world the results of Mr. Tesla's work, the wheels of industry would cease to turn. Our electric cars and trains would stop. Our towns would be dark. Our mills would be dead and idle. His name marks an epoch in the advance of electrical science. Mr. Berend ended his speech with a paraphrase of Pope's lines on Newton. Nature and nature's laws lay hid in night. God said, let Tesla be, and all was light.